Climate Watch, a recent report by one of the world's leading scientists says animals are going extinct at an alarming rate. The repercussions could be irreversible and detrimental to human survival. Here's CBS News meteorologist and climate specialist Jeff Berardelli. To start saving biodiversity, I would say we have about 15 minutes left. It is not often that you hear that degree of urgency from a scientist, but this is no ordinary situation. With more than six decades of research under his belt, Dr. Paul Ehrlich, one of the world's most respected conservation biologists, is sounding the alarm. I don't think the word annihilation really puts the true level of desperation on it because this is something that's utterly irreversible. His study's headline does not mince words. He and his team at Stanford University examined thousands of species, and they discovered that 515 land animals are on the brink of extinction, each with fewer than 1,000 individuals remaining. And the study concludes that we may only have a decade or two to save them. Ehrlich's latest work is a follow-up to his now famous 2015 paper, declaring that the world has entered its sixth mass extinction, meaning current rates of extinction are up to 100 times faster than they otherwise should be. And Ehrlich says in just the past 40 years, more than one-third of our planet's important biodiversity has disappeared. He stresses a healthy ecosystem is the foundation for human success and survival. In other words, we are part of biodiversity. We're utterly dependent on biodiversity. And if we continue to annihilate biodiversity, we're going to annihilate ourselves. Pointing to various climate tipping points like melting polar ice caps and the eradication of the Amazon rainforest, one of Australia's top climate scientists, Dr. Will Steffen, says, quote, we are already deep into the trajectory towards collapse. He's not alone. This view is shared by the world's most famous conservationist, Dr. Jane Goodall. We need the natural world. We depend on it. We can't go on destroying it. We've got to somehow understand that, that we're not separated from it. We're all intertwined. Harm nature, harm ourselves. As a clear example, Goodall singles out the current global pandemic. She says our rampant exploitation of Earth's resources like slashing and burning forests, hunting and trafficking wild animals, and industrial farming is bringing people and animals into closer contact with one another, a dangerous recipe for disease. All of this is creating environments which is perfect for a virus or a bacteria to cross that species barrier. But Goodall says the pandemic is just the latest example of how intertwined we are with the natural world. Best known for her 60-year study of chimpanzees in Tanzania, she has firsthand knowledge of the consequences of human folly. Killing and eating chimpanzees in Central Africa led to HIV AIDS. Meanwhile, Ehrlich stresses that messing with biodiversity combined with a warming climate are amplifying other epidemics like Lyme disease. Wiping out the passenger pigeon in North America uh, allowed a huge explosion of the uh, mice that feed on the same food that the passenger pigeon fed on. Those mice turn out to be the reservoir for Lyme disease. Each year now, America suffers roughly 300,000 cases of that nasty disease because we wiped out the passenger pigeon. Now, besides protection from disease, our ecosystem provides so many of the vital services we need to survive, like the food we eat, pollination of crops, and regulation of the climate. Goodall fears if we continue on with business as usual, our days are numbered. The ecosystems of the world will just give up and collapse. And uh, that's the end of us eventually, too. Both Goodall and Ehrlich strongly believe that humanity has to be much more responsible with our consumption amid an ever-growing population. Too many people, uh, with the rich particularly, consuming much too much. So what we need to do is something we did in December 1941 in the United States, completely change our consumption habits uh, and change it very rapidly. We never wasted a, an ounce of food, not like today. We need a, a different way of thinking about what is success. Is it just 
having more and more money, more and more stuff. In the U.S., it's estimated we waste a staggering 40% of our food. And Goodall worries that this disregard for what sustains us has already placed a heavy burden on our children. We have compromised their future. We've been stealing it for years and years and years. We're still stealing it today. But in children, Goodall sees a possible path forward. For the past 30 years, her charity Roots and Shoots has been investing in the future by empowering our youth with a message of responsibility and hope. Each one of us, each one of us, and that means you as well as me, uh, we make some impact every single day. And we have the luxury of choosing the impact that we make. And the impact we made, ironically, from the lockdown reveals a much healthier environment, a possible window into our future. But Goodall says only if we act on this moment. All the people in the big cities who can look up at the night sky and see stars bright, not looking through a layer of pollution. So when people emerge, they're not going to want to go back to the old polluted days. If enough of them, if the groundswell becomes bigger and bigger and bigger, people say, no, we don't want to go down this road. We want to find a different green economy. We don't want to always put economic development ahead of protecting the environment. We care about the future. We care about the health of the planet. We need nature. But maybe in the end, the big guys will have to listen. Jeff Berardelli, CBS News.